Um, no objection to the first Honor, story form. If I may intervene. Miss King may. Please remain silent, ma'am. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about a crazy story coming out of Atlanta, Georgia, involving a mass shooting. A 34-year-old woman by the name of Ryasek Kikne, who is originally from Cameroon and has been living in Georgia for quite a while, she shot three people, and two of them have died, and she shot them right in her condo, 1280 Peachtree. And before I go any further, may they rest in peace and prayers out to the family and to the man that's in the hospital right now fighting for his life in ICU. May you get well soon and make a full recovery. But the reason why this happened before I get to the video is because there was a lawsuit and some kind of beef against the property management because of her old job. Now, this is a really deep, detailed story. So before I go any further, let's roll the clip. In this clip, you're going to see and hear a little bit more context. You're going to see where this whole thing unfolded. You're going to see how a big part of Midtown was shut down for a while after this. But after we get done watching that, I'll come back. I'll talk about what was said there. Then I'll give you the rest of my two cents and my deep detail analysis. And then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Breaking news at noon, brand new developments in the deadly triple shooting in the heart of Midtown. Right now, the woman Atlanta police say pulled the trigger is going before a judge for the first time since she was arrested at the airport less than 24 hours ago. Good afternoon, I'm Lana Harris. Now we are now getting a first look at that first appearance in a Fulton County courtroom. Take a look, this is brand new video showing Raisa Kenye in court handcuffed. We've learned she is facing multiple charges, including two counts of murder, three counts of aggravated assault, and two counts of false imprisonment. Police are also telling CBS 46 that Midtown shootings were targeted attacks. We have live team coverage this afternoon. CBS 46's Madeline Montgomery is standing by with a brand new witness account to the accused shooter's arrest. We begin, though, with Rebecca Schramm, who is live at the condo building that was the scene of the first shooting. Now, Rebecca, you have learned more about how the victims and the alleged shooter are connected. Yeah, that's right, Lana. I've been searching through case files and lawsuits, and I've learned the accused shooter lived here at this high-rise condo building called 1280 West. Two of the shooting victims worked here. A third apparently was, at one point, a colleague of the woman who's now in custody. Residents of 1280 West condominiums described 60-year-old building manager Michael Shinners as a man who was loved by the community who could never be replaced. The widow of 41-year-old Wesley Freeman told CBS 46 via text that her husband was kind and gentle, incredibly funny, and that he never spoke an ill word of anyone. According to authorities and the building's management company, this woman, identified as 34-year-old Raisa Kenye, entered the management management office at about 1.45 Monday afternoon, shooting and killing Shinners and critically wounding Mike Horn, the management company's chief engineer. I've been in this building for 18 years. To hear something like that, this is definitely the worst day ever for this building. While authorities were investigating that shooting, they got a call of another shooting a few blocks away on Peachtree Street. Police say that's where Kenye shot and killed Freeman. Freeman worked for the accounting firm BDO, the same firm the accused shooter lists on her LinkedIn page as a former employer. We've learned Kenye was a plaintiff in several lawsuits. In May of 2020, she was one of several residents who sued the condo association at 1280 West over balcony repairs. In May of this year, she filed a lawsuit against several people and entities, including the two murder victims, Wesley Freeman and Michael Shinners. All right, so you saw that, you heard that. Now, this story is crazy. And elephant in the room, at least for me, I don't know about you guys, but elephant in the room for me is, hey, ABL, why is this story not all over the news? Why is this story not being covered as a mass shooting? I mean, it shut down Midtown Atlanta, or at least a part of it, right there by Colony Square, a high traffic area. Uh, I go there all the time myself. I go to the taco spot. There's a Chick-fil-A right there. Beautiful area. Why is the story not really being covered that much in the mainstream media? Well, there's a few factors that aren't there that the media wants to focus on. We're talking about mass shootings or any kind of shooting in general. First, it's got to be white male shooter. 
Okay, that's that's number one. White male shooter, we gotta have that. Black male shooter, eh. Black female shooter, eh. White male shooter, not there. Then it's gotta be person of color, what they say, POC, non white victims. The two men that have been identified who have passed away are both white men. The property manager, and I think somebody else that was right there in the office. And I think the other guy that got shot who was in the hospital was like a technician for the building. So they all worked in the building. It was a targeted thing. It's a black woman targeting white men from what I'm able to see so far. So that doesn't really, you know, fit. And then also, what kind of gun was used? Was it a big rifle? Probably a handgun, regular handgun. So there's nothing. You don't have anything there. You don't have the AR-15 the white male shooter or the non-white victims. So this won't be a really big story in the mainstream media, but it should be a pretty big story because what I see right here is someone dealing with mental issues. I don't want to say mental illness because I can't diagnose people. And I think sometimes that whole mental illness card is used as a get out of jail free card. Oh, I'm mentally ill. So I didn't know I was doing wrong when I wrote manifestos on LinkedIn targeting people. And then I go to a meeting with a gun and then I shoot and kill them. People I had issues with, I'm going to shoot and kill them because that's the only way out. I don't think mental illness is an excuse for that, but I think something's going on where the elevator is not going all the way to the top floor. You are a few trees short of a forest. You know, the lights are on, but ain't nobody home. Something's going on with your mind. And a key for me would be what I played at the very beginning of this video where she's in court after she'd already been caught. And I'll talk about that in a minute. How did she go all the way to Hartsford Jackson? But we'll talk about that in a moment. After she's in court, after she didn't been caught, she still can't keep quiet. The judge is like, hey, Miss Kidney, just go ahead and be quiet. Remain silent. And she's just not doing it. Refusing to be quiet, refusing to remain silent. And there's video of her recording herself talking to the police because let's, let's go down that road. How did we get here? What was the beef? Well, she says that her prior employer, I forget the name of the company, but maybe I'll put a screenshot up on the screen, but her prior employer had retaliated against her. She alleges that they broke into her house and they spoofed her phones and all kind of wild stuff. Right? So she calls the police, I guess to file a report, but when the police get there, they don't see any signs of forced entry into her home. So they can't call it a burglary. How is it a burglary if they didn't break into your house? If there's no evidence of a burglary, we can't classify it as a burglary. So it was little stuff like that. And she's going down to the police station talking to people. And she's talking to the sergeant and then somebody else. And the way she's speaking, she's not listening to what they're saying, really. And when she talks, they're quiet. They let her speak. But when they talk, meaning the police, she's over talking them, interrupting. It's the same thing she's doing here. They're trying to explain to her what's going on, but she's not really receiving it properly. It, 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 it begs the question, how did she have a job as an auditor or whatever she was at all? How did she have a job anyway? I think maybe at a certain point they got tired of that kind of behavior and fired her. And then this made her go down this whole rabbit hole of, oh, well, they broke into my house and it's spoofed my phones, all this, that, and the third. Just maybe. And then it was an apartment, not apartment, it was a condo building beef because they did not secure the condo enough. They broke into her house, all this and that. You, you see what I'm saying? So then the issue with the employer that fired her now becomes the issue of the condo management not doing enough to secure the premises and then other things. There was this uh, leaflet she put out a while ago trying to become like the president of the condo association or something like that. Okay. She's like running for office in the condo trying to have more, um, I guess you would say authority, more pool in the condo talking about, Oh, you come to me. I'm going to address your issues right away. Things won't get left on the back burner and we're going to have fun activities and food and drinks and just, just all kind of stuff like that. So I think this is a person who refused to just acknowledge reality, who refused to acknowledge her fault in a situation and trying to point fingers and blame everybody else. That's what it appears to be. Because even when you didn't got caught with the weapon, with your clothes where you had, where you shot the people, 
you got caught on camera, they got pictures of you and everything, you still want to be defiant. What do you, why? What's the point? Why keep talking? Just be quiet right now. You're not going to come home anymore. This is a national story. People are covering it. They see your face all over the place. You have a, you have a manifesto on LinkedIn where you mention one of the guys that you shot and killed. Oh, it's a wrap. They got all the evidence that they need. How did she get to Hartsfield Jackson? How did she get all the way from Midtown to the airport? That's not, that's not necessarily a, a quick journey. You know, um, she went on a martyr train, uh, apparently like on a train, like a, not, not a subway necessarily, but it's like an above ground type thing. I don't think martyr goes below ground. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's all above ground, but regardless, she was on a martyr train and went from, uh, Midtown all the way to the airport. Maybe people that were on the train weren't, weren't watching the news. They didn't really see what was going on. So they didn't really know that it was her, but she was easily identifiable. It was a pretty good picture of her in the condo. People knew who she was already from the condo because she'd been there for five years. She had a manifesto online. Everybody knew who it was and she didn't change her clothes at all. She had a whole suitcase apparently, but did not change her clothes. It's like, what's it, what's in the briefcase? Is it, is it no clothes in there? Is it papers? Is it, is it a weapon? What's going on? And then they found the weapon on her at the airport. So this could have been very dangerous. She could have been trying to go up in the lobby and do something to somebody if they ran up on her the wrong way. Okay. So this, this could have been a lot more dangerous than what it was, but ultimately she wasn't going to get anywhere. She was an international terminal, but how are you going to get through TSA with a gun in your bag? She was going to get stopped regardless. Like I say, the lights are on, but ain't nobody home. You're going to go to Hartsfield Jackson, the busiest airport in the entire world with a gun in your bag. And you just got done shooting three people, killing two of them. I mean, it is crazy, but I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you, why is this story not the biggest thing on television right now? Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. Stories like this happen, I don't want to say frequently, but they happen more than what you may think. And the reason why you don't know about it is because the media has no benefit from it. They can't say white man bad. They can't say AR-15. They, they can't say person of color, victim, white man, villain. They can't say that in this case. But it's important to understand, I think, the more of the story is, understand who your neighbors are, understand signs of maybe mental illness or mental distress, understand that people, they sometimes they go crazy. This lady right here might've been crazy for a while based upon how she was behaving. She probably had some issues for quite a while. Now I'm not saying this could have been prevented. I'm just saying, watch it back because sometimes people lose it and they lose it on innocent people that did nothing wrong. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.